Hey, what's up? It's your boy Rock and favoritism. It's my favorite word that changes length depending on if you live here or here. The whole idea of favoritism can lead to an all-you-can-eat buffet of insecurities, and can even lead to rivalries that tear families apart. Well, why not encourage that rivalry by taking a look at a debate as old as time itself? Which Mario brother is objectively better, and why is it Luigi? The Super Mario Brothers. Have you heard of them? They're pretty fucking hard to miss. The most iconic characters in all of gaming. The ones who saved the industry single-handedly back in the 80s. Well, Linguini less so, but eh. This dynamic duo has been around for 35 years now, but the conundrum of superiority still lingers on to this very day. Now, despite what I said, uh, I don't know, like two paragraphs ago, we're gonna throw in a hearty dose of subjectivity, because I'd rather talk about my opinion, and also, do I look like someone who has integrity? Do I? So let's take a look at these two mushroom munching Italian inbreds and figure out who is best. <laughs> I'm gonna piss someone off with this video, aren't I? Let's start off with obviously the better known of the two. Red Luigi. Mario first appeared in 1981 in the Donkey Kong arcade game. He was initially known as Jumpman because, get this, it defines him. Later, he was renamed to Mario after Mario Segal, the landlord of Nintendo of America's office. And the name stuck. Did it? Believe it or not, Mario was not a wholly original design, instead being based on Popeye. Nintendo originally wanted to make their arcade game with the iconic Popeye trio, but copyright came banging on the door so Nintendo copied their homework, but was sure to change it up a bit. And boom, an icon was born. Mario's look remained fairly consistent in art, the main change being his overall and shirt colours. They were always red and blue, but which one was which colour changed every time Miyamoto sneezed. His in-game sprites, however? JESUS! Yeah, this is a nosebleed of inconsistency. Up until Mario World, where I'd argue they perfected the 2D Mario design. Then Mario 64 Mario stumbles into the room with gloves that could cut a roast. Thankfully the GameCube era fixed this, and his design remained pretty much unchanged to this day. Until Mario slapped us in the face with a reminder that our time is limited. I hope to god that whoever rendered each and every hair on Mario's head finds happiness. I'd personally argue that the Mario Odyssey design of Mario is the best. Just look at this guy. No, you want your his cheeks. However, I won't deny that there is so much charm in older models, particularly the ones from Galaxy 1 and 2. Something about this one just makes me so happy. I don't like the 3D world one. He's definitely hiding something. Luigi, on the other hand, has a much less interest in history, at least from a design standpoint. Luigi debuted in the arcade game Mario Bros, where he was a recolor of Mario. Recolor of Mario. Recolor. Green Mario. Green. In Mario 2, he got his own sprite and attributes that actually differentiated him from Mario and would go on to be key attributes of his character to this very day. Then he wasn't in Mario 64. Or Sunshine. I'd argue that the biggest turning point for Luigi as a character was a little game that I like to call Luigi's House. Luigi's design was perfected in this game, and can we take a look at these renders real quick? Look at this goon, I love him! Luigi's Mansion took a huge step in establishing... No. Surely not. Personality? This is a f***ing outrage! Yes, in Luigi's Mansion not only did Luigi have physical attributes that helped differentiate him from Mario, but he had character. And this was most obvious in both Luigi's Mansion and Paper Mario. In Luigi's Mansion he's scared, utterly terrified at the situation he's found himself in. He hums along to the main theme just to fill the silence of the decrepit halls of the manor. He screams with genuine fear when a ghost jumps out at him. He f***ing cries tears of joy at the end of the game when he saves his brother. This is the most human any Mario character has ever felt. How can you not love him? In Paper Mario, Luigi has a diary in which he details how much he wishes he could be included on the next big adventure, and how much he strives to be like his big brother. Now let's look at Mario. Woohoo! My toaster has more personality than this guy. Mario, for most of his life, has been a blank slate with little to no personality. Most. We'll get to you. Now granted, we're able to infer some <coughs> personality this traits. Womanizing <coughs> animal abuser, a cruel, misanthropic sociopath. Although Mario's personality is paper thin, you don't have to tell me to leave because I already did. 
I believe this was a completely intentional move. What is the purpose of Mario in his games? Well, put simply, he's a vehicle that allows us as players to traverse the game's world. Mario's supposed to be an extension of ourselves, and his generic yippies and yahoos are designed to enlighten a joyful and adventurous feeling within us. Mario lacks his own distinct personality because we, as the players, are supposed to fill his shoes. I don't care, I still prefer Luigi. <laughs> Remember when I said... Most. We'll get to you. Yeah, me too, what a fun time. How about we actually do what I said we were gonna do? I know, what a concept. Nintendo took Mario's character and did unthinkable things to it behind closed doors and spat out mortality. Whoa! Super Mario Odyssey is the best game in the series. Not because it has the best gameplay, the best levels, the best music. Nah, f all that. It's because of Mario. Look at him! He dances when there's music. He gets angry at Bowser. He is visibly concerned by what Cappy tells him. He fans himself when he's too hot, he shivers when he's too cold. Why am I impressed by this? Mario has never felt more alive than he does in this game, and I'm both absolutely fucking dumbfounded by how monumental of a change this is, and also thrown off by it. I'm so used to the unchanging face of Mario that this was very jarring to begin with. It sort of felt like I was looking at a different character at first, which in all honesty is still kind of the vibe I get when comparing this in-game model with this one. The renders look more like the Mario we're used to, and if you'll allow me a minute, they are so f***ing beautiful. This is the biggest evolution in the series of in-game personality. So, where's Luigi's? Are you serious? We need Luigi in this game! Nintendo! Please. Oh, oh way to go! Let's -a go! Never mind. This simultaneously makes me happy and hurt. Luigi is absolutely adorable in this game. I love him to death, but come on! Why couldn't he be playable? And get the same level of personality as Mario? I really don't understand this. If only there were another game on Switch that showed off Luigi's personality. Huh. Guys. Guys. GUYS! Look at this happy boy! Look at this scared boy! Oh my god, I love him! This game... Wowza Rooney on toast, this game. Mario Odyssey may have pushed me into thinking that Mario was superior to Luigi, but this... Holy f the animations in this game are absolutely godlike. The interactions between Luigi and the other characters are on another level. The overtop cowardly nature of Luigi contrasts the blank nothingness of Gooigi hilariously and leads to some hilarious moments. Egad's mouth is animated to his gibberish and Mario gets cock blocked. Luigi's Mansion 3 takes the personality and charm from Super Mario Odyssey and says, This is fucking child's play, and multiplies it exponentially. So this leaves us in kind of a weird place. Mario and Luigi are on a level playing field. Both characters are expressive and funny and, overall, really charming. So that begs the question, which one wins? Well, let's put it this way. One of them has had a consistently amazing character since the GameCube era and hasn't failed since to charm and delight. And the other one only grew a personality in 2017. TLDR? It's fucking Luigi.